enjoying a fantastic classic dish from Rome called pasta carbonara. Now that word carbonara means many things to many people. Today I want to show you the very classic traditional version and we can have debates uh, over Zoom uh, around the, the flavors that you enjoy uh, versus what I'm doing here. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's jump in and make fresh handmade pasta accented with carbonara sauce. So the first step is looking at how to make fresh pasta. Fresh made pasta should be within everyone's uh, capabilities. Today we're going to show you a kind of utility dough that is good for all purpose use. You can use this for fresh made uh, stuffed pastas, use it for your lasagnas. For today, we're going to cut a handmade pasta to use for our carbonara. So the pasta dough today, we are focusing on a fantastic double zero pasta flour, which is simply a very fine milled uh, gluten flour from Italy. Now, depending on how often you cook at home, you don't need to get the double zero completely. If you have all-purpose flour and you simply want to try something at home and make a pasta from scratch, use your all-purpose to start with. And as you gain confidence, start to progress into getting different pasta flours and different accents in your kitchen to work with. Today, very simply, we're going to work with one large egg. This is a 60 gram egg. We're going to use the whole egg, the yolk and the white. Again, this will provide a dough that is somewhat firm in texture and very forgiving, which for the home cook, I think this is a, agreed, a very positive benefit. Generally speaking, the ratio you want to work with today is approximately 100 grams of your pasta flour. You want to take your 60 gram egg, just simply place that in the middle and create a nice well. This is a fantastic opportunity to engage your children or younger generations in the kitchen. It's a wonderful way to get them hands on and let's uh, uh, agree everyone loves pasta, don't they? So we simply pack the egg on a flat surface. That will prevent any shells from being cracked into the, the, uh, the egg itself. Present your egg into the flour. And at this point, what we need to do is simply start working the dough in a very logical way. And what I mean by logical is we want to incorporate the egg yolk and the egg white with a little bit of olive oil. And then slowly start to work this in until the flour is incorporated. Now the logic behind this is, as you incorporate the flour slowly from edge to edge, the dough will come together in a very creamy manner. Versus if you were to simply start mashing the dough with the flour and the egg, you're going to get a lot of lumps, and it's going to be a much more difficult dough to work through uh, in the end. Now, why am I adding olive oil? The olive oil is going to prevent the dough from drying out when you're working it on your bench. And this again is another insurance policy to ensure that your dough is a bit forgiving when you start to work it. Again, depending on the season, if you're working with pasta dough in the summer versus the winter, your dough, your flour might have different hydration. It's a bit more humid in Hong Kong in the summertime, so your flour might take less egg. So the whole rule of thumb here is, let's have fun with it, let's not be intimidated, and just recognize that the process is what's most important. So our process today is to make a dough that is slightly firm to the touch, yet supple and smooth without having any lumps in it. Now, if you don't want to do this by hand or you don't want to do it on your countertop, you can absolutely use a stand mixer, a food processor, anything that you have at home. And we're going to start to work in the flour from the outside edges now. You can see the texture is already somewhat creamy. And at this point, we can be a bit more aggressive with incorporating our flour. It is quite messy at the beginning, but let's face it, this is why we cook. We want to get hands-on. We want to offer opportunities to really engage ourselves with the food. You can be a proud cook in the kitchen, offering your family and your friends a little bit of extra love by making fresh pasta at home. Now, why are we using whole eggs versus egg yolks or uh, egg whites only? Well, if you can imagine the egg yolk has a very high concentration of fat, this will provide a softer, smoother dough with a nice tooth feel. Whereas our doughs made with egg whites or whole eggs will be a bit more firm and crisp and dense, providing more structure. So if you're going to do shape passes like a ravioli, uh, you might want to have some egg whites in there. Now from there, we start to work in the dough. 
to get all of that flour incorporated. This is an excellent opportunity to clean your cutting boards or your surface by getting all that flour incorporated to the dough. And it's going to start to come together right in front of your eyes. Transition to kind of a kneading motion. And you'll find in just a matter of 30 seconds, your dough will come together. It will clean off of your hands and clean your countertop at the same time. Now, this recipe today, as I mentioned, this is a 60 gram egg. We have 100 grams of flour on our table. You may have a little bit of extra flour left over. As I mentioned, the hydration during the summertime might be different with the humidity in the air. So with that said, use your good judgment. If you have extra flour at this point, you can see the doughs come together is somewhat shaggy, but it's there. I would just move that flour to the side. There's no need to use it at the moment. You can always come back and add more flour if needed. Now, if you find that your dough is very dry, for example, add a few drops of water. Drop it at a time until you get that kind of soft, smooth dough. At this point, we're no longer mixing our dough. We need to transition to kneading it. This is a process of developing gluten, okay? I'm sure everyone's heard this catchphrase, gluten. What is this magic word? Well, simply put, it is the structure of your pasta dough. It gives you that wonderful kind of toothsome feel. And more importantly, it's going to allow you to do many, many different things with this one common dough. So this next stage is very crucial. You must knead the dough for about 8 minutes, 10 minutes, depending on the size. And again, this is just a one egg dough. The recipe card that you have in front of you is for four people, so that would be about four eggs. So you may want to transition into a stand mixer using a paddle attachment. Make it a lot easier on yourself. But at the same time, this is a great opportunity to get your friends engaged at your next dinner party, make a bit of pasta beforehand. So the kneading process should be done kind of at the heel of your hand. This is where your, most of your strength is, right when your wrist meets the palm of your hand. Kneading should push the dough, fold and push, fold and push. Kneading is not massaging the dough, it's not throwing the dough. This is all play. We need to focus on development of that gluten. Now, a few things to take care of. If you're going to produce this in a food processor or even a stand mixer, ensure at all times that you touch the bottom of the mixer pot. If you feel that it's getting too warm or even hot, you must stop immediately because there's two things that will activate your gluten. One is moisture, which we have from the eggs, for example. This is good for development. But the other one is heat. Now, heat will activate the gluten and actually have it set. And this will make it much more difficult to actually roll out your dough later. So ensure that you're not creating too much friction, which will in turn create too much heat for your dough. So at this point, we have, in that short amount of time, a very smooth, tactile dough, which will be perfect, but we need to wait at least one hour to allow this to rest. If I were to simply roll this out at the moment, you can see, with a little flour, that this dough will instantly spring back. It's almost comical how you can press it down, but the dough starts to pull back on itself. And the reason for this is the gluten is very young and it needs to have a moment to rest and just relax slightly. And at that point, you'll have a much easier way of rolling up your pasta dough and a much better end result. So, let's just put this to the side. Put your dough in a bowl covered with plastic wrap and get it about one hour in the fridge, and that will provide you with a fantastic dough ready to use in one hour's time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back through the magic of TV. We have some pasta already prepared. This is the same recipe dough that we simply allowed to rest for that one hour period. Now the next step, create a clean surface. Your dough right now, again, if I press it down, it's not pulling back, it's wonderfully relaxed, no stress. It's ready to be received by you and your pasta roller. So simply take some of your pasta flour, or you can work with semolina, completely up to you. A little flour on the bottom, a little bit on top. Flour your surface properly, and you're going to have no sticking, which will really create a wonderful uh, rolling experience for you. Now, first things first, get a rolling pin. Everyone should have something similar to this at home. If you don't, use a bottle of wine. Uh, use your 30-year-old scotch bottle. Whatever you have at home that is round, you can at least apply some pressure. Start to... Put your dowel in the middle, or your open pin in the middle, and press outwards. 
Turn it and press outwards. Resist the urge to roll it like you were making cookies, for example, because again, you'll activate that glute a little bit too much. You want to kind of get your leg set first. Again, today we're going to make something similar to a tag battle, but really we don't need to worry about terminology at the moment. Let's just make something that's rustic and homemade, something we can be proud of for our friends and family to enjoy. Now, see here, if we get a little bit of sticking on here, add a bit more flour. At this point, we're not going to be too concerned about how much flour we add to the outside. Let's just ensure that you have an easy piece of pasta to roll out. Now, keep in mind, the olive oil that we've added is going to allow us to work with some forgiveness. It's not going to dry out as fast. But more importantly, it's going to give you some extra spring so your pasta don't want to break as easily. Okay? Now, at this point, I can tell you how many microns thick and thin, how many centimeters, millimeters that you should have it long. Don't worry about that. Let's be realistic. Let's simply work with the tabletop you have at home. If you have a three meter long table, I welcome you to try to roll this out three meters long. If you have a studio flat with only 60 cm worth of countertop space, roll it out to whatever makes sense to you. Today, I'm gonna to go for a nice long pasta that is not overly thin, maybe about two to three ml thick, okay? If you have a pasta roller at home, by all means use the pasta roller. This can truly be used in a myriad of ways that is extremely flexible for your home kitchen. Okay, now, there's our pasta dough. It's just that easy. You can probably see my hands coming through at the bottom. I personally like a little bit of bite to my pasta, so I'm going to leave it a little bit thicker. Now, let's talk about this word al dente. Many people are going to use this word in their kitchens to describe good pasta. You need to understand that al dente really doesn't apply so much to fresh pasta. This is more towards the dry pasta market because at the end of the day, you're already working with a dough that is hydrated, a dough that has a certain texture already set. Now we're going to boil this pasta in a moment and I'll have a set time for you, but at the moment here, let's begin cutting, okay? So there's our pasta dough, even thickness, it's very forgiving, you can slap it around a little bit, you can let your kids play with it, engage them. Most important part now, to cut your pasta, you can do this absolutely with a knife at home, you don't need a special cutter. Heavily flour your pasta, bring it over itself to create the dimension that you're comfortable to work with. Again, I have these big hands, so I'm gonna work with a big size of pasta, so I'm gonna leave it about 12 cm wide, okay? So we simply fold it on itself once, fold it back twice, a little extra flour to prevent any sticking, and now you have kind of a book fold here. Now the beauty of this, beautiful little knife, you can simply come and start cutting straight down to create your little folds of pasta, okay? Do not do a rolling cut as you might when you slice onions, for example, because this will likely have your pasta stick together. Instead, straight up and down just like a guillotine. Now again, should you want to have something like a spaghetti shape, a canne, uh, a rigatoni, if you see it, you must understand that these types of passes are actually extruded through special dyes using a mechanic process. These are simply hand cut passes that you can do at home. Now you can buy special dyes to do these types of uh, extruded passes in your home. Have a look online, I'm sure you can find something. Now from here we have beautiful pasta that you can absolutely now bundle this up into beautiful little nests, flour it heavily, put that on one baking tray, three or four piles, and put it in your freezer at the highest setting and allow that to freeze individually. Wrap it up in a little zip bag and you have fresh pasta that will cook as quickly as instant noodles. So you have a more nutritious, hearty meal to work with at home. But for our purposes today, we're simply going to put this to the side and by the time our water comes to a boil to cook that pasta, we are going to have a fantastic carbonara sauce ready to go. So at this point, we'll simply leave everything on the countertop and let's get making that sauce. So what is carbonara? Carbonara is a classic Roman pasta that really is three ingredients strong. And I do mean three. Our ingredients today, we have beautiful organic eggs by free range. Both for your pasta dough and your sauce, you're going to taste the difference. You're going to see the color difference. Carbonara should be extremely simple sauce. You're going to have 
In this case, for one, one pack of pasta that we've made, I would say, let's go on one egg yolk. Okay, confirm that there's no shells in there. These eggs are a little bit smaller than I should expect, so we're going to actually go two egg yolks today. Now, a little tip here is, if you want kind of that creamy, creamy texture that you expect from carbonara, don't add dairy. We don't add any cream here. There'll be no cream in our pan. Instead, add a little egg white. This egg white will later start to get a creamy texture in your pasta once we cook it. Okay? But for now, we have our one and a half egg yolks there. We're going to add to that something called pecorino romano. Pecorino is a sheep's milk cheese, a firm cheese, similar to Parmesan, but absolutely not Parmesan. We need to make this distinction. Pecorino is the traditional application for a carbonara. And the importance here to note is that pecorino is extremely salty. So we have not added salt anywhere, not to our pasta dough, and we won't be adding any salt to this dish in its entirety. All the salt will actually come from this beautiful cheese. It has a nutty, rich flavor. It is unlike anything else. And if you prefer to have something a little bit less salty, or you simply don't like sheep's milk cheese, you can look at Parmesan. But please try it in this manner, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. So from there, we have this beautiful snow-like gravy of our cheese. Very important to note here that this grated texture, uh, we want the cheese to melt into our pasta sauce to emulsify and create a creamy little bit around. Do not grate this like a, a cheddar cheese that you might put on a salad. These are going to get stringy pizza cheese in your pasta, and that's not what we're looking for today. Next thing, pepper. Black peppercorns, as much or as little as you like. But this is the three ingredients. This is all we have. And you might be wondering, Nolan, where's the cream? Carbonara should have cream, it should have ham, it should have bacon. Well, I'll tell you right now that most of our carbonaras around the world are inspired by chefs from different countries. And we want to show you something that's a bit more classic and traditional. So we're staying with our Roman classic of just these three ingredients. Now, of course, the pasta being a main course, we want to add some type of meat to it. And today we're working with something called Montale, which is a pork jowl centered around this part. It's very rich and nutty. Of course, you have an extreme amount of fat, but in a moment, we're going to incorporate that into our sauce. and It'll actually emulsify beautifully with the sauce. Now, onto our next ingredient, our guantale. Simply put, slice this as thin or as thin as you like, but do take note that it does come with a bit of a punch of salt again. So, this is something that is a bit of a delicacy, uh, maybe difficult to find, but I assure you some of the local specialty groceries will have this. It may require a pre-order, but make sure that once you have a piece, you do find various ways to use it. Carbonara is a great example of how. Simply slice this into you know, two to three cm long sizes, about two ml thick. Little bits of fat, absolutely fine. Some pieces are going to have this beautiful marbling, which is what we're looking for. Okay, and at the end of the day, you add as much or as little as you like. This is, in essence, a very simple, natural pasta that relies heavily on great ingredients. You must have excellent cheese. You must have that pecorino. You must have much tale. Don't use bacon. Try to find these ingredients and then make the dish. And I assure you that it'll be unlike anything you've had before. So we simply put that back. All of this fat has flavor. It has seasoning. And it's going to make its way into our pan in just a moment. So our pan is hot. Adding the guanciale in. No need to add any oil. You're going to get a good render on this. But a little tip. If you do want to ensure you get more rendering, more of that fat out, add just a splash of water. A little bit of moisture will help pull out some of that fat even more so. Okay, so we're going to work this just over medium heat. It's not going to render like you might expect a bacon would, where it just lets all the sizzle out. Instead, this is going to be a little bit more of a, a chew. You don't want to create a crispy type bacon with this. You want to have that texture of a dense chew while still allowing the fat to render out and really season the sauce. So let's recap. We have three ingredients in our sauce, black pepper. We have egg yolks. Again, if you want extra creamy, you add some egg white. Maybe a whole egg would be great. And we have that pecorino romano. The last ingredient is all of this fat, this base that we are developing in the frying pan here. All of the fat that comes out, we keep it in the pan and we use it. We don't allow it to escape because, again, that's all of our flavor. So the fat is trying to go a little bit translucent. We're getting a little bit of color. 
by no means are we getting that dark crispiness that you might expect from a bacon. We're not looking for that today. So while this is doing its thing, let's transition over to our pasta water. Cooking is about multitasking. But as I mentioned, we have the pasta here that you can have pre-made and frozen, so we create a convenience. We have a sauce here of only three ingredients, so we're not taking up space in your fridge. But the importance now is being organized, because once we add that pasta to the water, we have all of two, two and a half minutes to go from here to here to create our finished dish. This is one point where you have to have all of your items laid out, all of your mise en place. You want to make sure your prep is done and right in front of you, so you can move quickly. Okay? So we're going to reduce the heat slightly on our conchata, allow it to render slowly. And let's go ahead and look at our pasta water. I have a large pot that's ready to receive this little bit of pasta. Okay? The importance of having a large pot is to ensure that once we add the pasta, the temperature does not drop. We want to keep and maintain that kind of thermal condition inside the water. We do need to add salt to our water. Consider that we have about 60 grams of egg, 100 grams of flour, and we only have two minutes now to cook our pasta in this water and season all of that flour, okay? So from here, let's go ahead and add our pasta. Carefully allow it to come from a high so it separates. And let's go. The pasta water should be salty. Not as salty as the ocean in this case because you have salty cheese, you have salty guanciale. You should be able to taste the pasta water and say, okay, I, I pick up the salt. And you understand that that's going to allow us to create some flavor before we even touch our sauce ingredients, okay? So, what are we gonna happen next? Well, what are we doing? We have pasta cooking here. As the pasta cooks, the water is gonna become slightly milky, and this is absolutely what we're looking for. This is now an emulsion of your pasta flour, a little bit of the proteins from your eggs, and of course the water. This will help thicken our sauce, and it's the last secret ingredient, which is on your recipe card but secret to most home cooks, that they don't keep the pasta water for making their pasta, okay? So the timer's already gone off for two minutes. We're almost there. Allow this to hydrate in the hot water. Temperature's gonna come back up to here, and let's finish our sauce. We have our egg yolks, we have our pecorino romano. Start to move it around a little bit, get it mixed together. And at this point, this is the emulsifier, the binder of your pasta. What we're going to do in a moment, once the pasta is cooked, we're going to add it to the hot guantale and fat with a little bit of the pasta water. Allow it to saute or allow it to cook just for 10, 20 seconds. Turn off the heat and we're going to add in that egg. Allow it to cream throughout our pasta and create a wonderful sauce we've never had before. This is going to be special. So, our pasta is starting to come up a little bit, starting to get a bit wider. Remember that as you add your dough to the hot water, it's going to hydrate. All the flour is going to pick up the water and actually expand. So where you started with 100 grams of flour, you might end up with actually 200 grams of pasta. Okay. So here we are. Guantale, we pick it up. I'm going to bring this temperature here up. Keep in mind that the water that we're adding here also has the salt. So you don't want to reduce the salt too much. Extremely important here because once you reduce that water, the salt is just going to ruin the dish. So make sure once it comes up to a simmer, we can retain a little bit more of that water in case we need to thin out our sauce after. Okay, so let's go ahead, strain our pasta. I promise you I have, I have a colleague in there, no problem. All right, pasta goes inside, give it a quick mix. Beautiful, beautiful emulsion already. So I can see here, the pasta's already starting to suck up on that sauce. We can turn our heat off, go in with our carbonara base, and I can tell already we're probably gonna need just a little bit more uh, of our water. But first, let's get that mixed together. Work with the residual heat of the pasta. That frying pan, we have a nice thick bottom. It's gonna keep the heat inside and allow that heat to just bring the egg up to a point where it starts to emulsify. But I promise you, if you leave this on top of even the lowest fire, or you put it into a plate that is too hot, you're gonna curdle your sauce and create what will end up being almost like a scrambled egg sauce, which is not what we're going for today. So very simple. I see a wonderful creaminess to it. Remember all the effort that you put into your pasta. We are not trying to create a pasta in cream sauce soup. It really should be about just dressing the pasta itself 
and allowing that sauce to just simply accent it. Okay? You can plate this any way you want, it doesn't need to be overly fancy. Just let it be what it is, which is fresh homemade pasta. If you're catering to your family and friends at home, let's be honest, let's be realistic. Invest in the greatest ingredients you can find, and I guarantee you, you're going to have great results in the end. Great cooking should be about having great friends and family in the kitchen, and always start with great ingredients. From here, I present to you Pasta Carbonara, Alla Romagna. We've used the wonderful Pecorino Romano cheese. We have some fantastic manchata, which is that pork gel, and simply put, a fantastic pasta that you've made. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to receiving you in the future at Parade, and stay tuned for the remainder of our Happy Belly Clubhouse chefs, who will be coming up with great videos shortly. Thank you very much.